In this video, I will be going through some of the configuration steps for allowing Raspbian to communicate with the camera, the steering servo, and the speed controller. And I will also run through how to set up the camera, as well as how to calibrate the steering servo and the electronic speed controller. Calibration is needed to translate the internal software signals into physical steering angles and motor speed. This is the third video in the overall project. The project is to build a deep learning Raspberry Pi controlled autonomous vehicle. The project will cover the system from end to end, from building the hardware, the base RC chassis, and attaching the Raspberry Pi and the associated electronics, and then getting it all working. It then works through the planning and development of the software that controls it all, as well as the training and the testing of various machine learning algorithms to see how well they go at line following. So that's enough of the intros, let's dive into the content. Okay, so I assume that you are able to install the Raspbian OS. If not, there's plenty of tutorials out there, just Google or browse YouTube. I have installed the latest full install of Buster. So let's start setting things up. Now as the Raspberry Pi will be sitting on a moving vehicle, we will need some kind of remote access. I typically use tight VNC, as well as the secure shell. So to set these up, you need to run Raspi config. And after launching, we need to choose interfacing options. And let's start off with secure shell. We need to enable it, so select yes and OK. And while we're there, let's get back to interfacing and VNC. Yes, we'll enable that and OK. Now I normally use the tight VNC client, which needs some additional configuration around authentication. So we need to edit the config file. And then we need to add an additional line for authentication. Okay, and save that file. And we also need to set a password for remote access. So enter the access password and again to verify. And after a reboot, we should be good to go for remote access. Next, let's set up the camera. Firstly, we need to enable access to the camera, which we enable via Raspberry config. This again should be in the interfacing. It's the first option. Choose yes and OK. This will require a reboot, so go ahead and reboot the Pi. Now, in terms of configuring the camera, the main idea was to align it, at least roughly, with the chassis. To do this, I simply took image snapshots from the camera and overlaid a large central crosshairs on it. I was then able to slowly refine the positioning of the camera until things appeared aligned. After multiple iterations, I got fairly good alignment with the chassis. Horizontal was roughly horizontal, and it was fairly symmetric around the center line. After getting this initial alignment, I added some registration points to the image overlay that aligned with the two main screw points on the chassis. These helped in refining the alignment a little more, and will also be useful in the future if I have to remove and then reattach the camera frame and get it back in the same position. Next are the steering and speed controller. But firstly, we need to set up the Raspberry Pi to be able to communicate with the servo driver hat. The WaveShare servo driver hat interfaces with the Raspberry Pi via the I2C bus, or I2C. We need to firstly enable this 
in raspi config so opening this up again interfacing options and then item number five we need to enable it yes and okay Uh, the other thing we need to know is the address of the servo driver hat on the I squared C bus. It should be 40 hex according to the documentation, but we can easily check. And we see that we have a device available at address 40, which is good. Now let's look into the steering calibration. We will have our Python code running on the Raspberry Pi. This talks to the servo driver hat, which sends the actual pulse width modulation signals to the servo. So in our code, we will be sending a steering command, which is the pulse width duration. The servo driver hat outputs the actual PWM pulses and the servo arm moves. What the calibration step does is to work out the valid range of pulse widths we can use in our code. What value moves the steering servo to the center position? What's the maximum pulse width we can use that results in full steering lock in one direction? And the minimum pulse width for full steering lock in the other direction? These values will be different for each vehicle. The way we calibrate is mainly trial and error. Firstly, before installing the servo in the vehicle, we need to center it at the nominal center. For most servos, this corresponds to a pulse width of 1500 microseconds. We have already performed this step previously as part of the TT02 chassis build. We then install the servo arm for this centered position and install the servo. And now with everything installed and the steering mechanism connected, we perform the trial and error bit of the calibration. This involves programming a center value and the two full lock values and sending them to the servo to see how the steering behaves. And then based on the results, adjust the values and test again. Now let's go through this trial and error part on our model. I started with the nominal center point at 1500 and adjusted an offset starting from zero to find the true center point and slowly tried an increasing set of steering angles, being careful not to go past the physical limits of the steering mechanism. In the end, the true center appeared to be around 1440 microseconds, 1500 minus 60 offset, with the steering full lock positions being plus and minus 190 from this center. Now for the electronic speed controller. The way we work with the speed controller is the same as for the steering servo. From within our code, we pass a pulse width value, say 1625 microseconds, to the servo driver hat, which sends the corresponding pulse width modulated signal to the speed controller. This applies the voltage to the motor and the wheels turn. The interface is the same. However, the calibration steps are a bit easier. With the speed controller, we get to define the valid range of pulses ourselves. We just have to tell it what pulse width we want to use for the neutral or stop point, for the maximum forward speed and the maximum reverse speed. Let's run through the process on the model. The kit comes with a Tamiya TBLE-02S speed controller. So the steps here are somewhat specific to that controller. The speed controller has a single set button, which is used for all of the setup. For these steps, we need to disconnect the motor from the speed controller, just to be on the safe side. Firstly, we need to ensure that we are in brushed mode. So holding down the set button and turning on the speed controller. The status LED cycles through colors red, green, orange, red, green, 
orange and releasing on the orange color. Now the LED should switch between orange and green and we have to push the set button when it shows green and we push the set button once again to confirm. We can double check that we are in brushed mode by turning off and then turning on again and the LED should flash green for brushed mode. The next step is to set the neutral, forward and reverse positions for the speed controller. It's worth noting that the speed controller behavior didn't match what was documented in the manual. But luckily the guys at Wonderland Models in the UK had a good description online on how to get things going, which is what I followed. So heading back to the Pi, what we need to do is select our pulse width values for neutral, max forward and reverse. We've chosen 1500, 2000 and 1000 microseconds respectively. Now we just use a small piece of test code to cycle through these values, sending them off to the speed controller and at the same time we need to push the set button to lock in each of these values. With the speed controller we need to hold down the set button while we turn it on. The status LED cycles through colors orange, red, green, orange, red, and we let go of the button when the LED is red and it should flash once or twice green. The speed controller is now ready to be configured so we start up the program. Firstly we need to set the neutral point and we push the button once and the LED flashes red. Then we go to max forward and we push it again and it should double flash red. And we apply max reverse and push the set again and the LED goes out. And then the program sends out the neutral position and we can turn the speed controller off and the setup should be complete. Let's quickly test that the motor works as expected. So reconnecting the motor with the speed controller and we will go and run a simple test program. The program starts applying motor speed values from 1500 upwards. At around 1560, the wheels start turning and slowly increasing in speed. Then the code starts applying motor speed values downwards from 1500, which the speed controller interprets as braking. And for the second time we apply motor speed values downwards from 1500, which the speed controller interprets as reversing. And then around 1440 the wheels start turning in the reverse direction. It all appears to be working as intended. It's also worth noting that with this speed controller, you can enable and disable reverse. This is done by holding down the set button when turning on the power and releasing the button when the LED is showing red. Each time you do this, it will toggle between enabled and disabled. Each time you turn on the speed controller, the status LED will flash to indicate whether or not reverse is enabled or disabled. So that's the configuration and calibration done. We are now to the point where we can write our main autonomous vehicle software modules to start driving this vehicle. In the next video, I will start working on the overall control software for making the vehicle move. If you want to follow the overall project, please hit the subscribe button and feel free to like or comment.